Hi, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about something that sounds very obvious to, to everyone. Everyone who owns a dog goes for walks with your dog, right? And um, I am going to tell you how I do my walks with my dogs and um, maybe give you some suggestions on, on how you can make your walks uh, nice for you and for dog because the walks I'm talking about is for your dogs. You have to uh, mainly think about your dog when you go for a walk with your dog. I, I made a PowerPoint presentation for you today just with some pictures of me and my own dogs. Okay, so let's just get started um, with my PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, I'm going to make the screen big for you. Oh, sorry, I forgot to make myself a little bit smaller on your screen because we don't want me occupying, occupying half of the screen. There you go. Almost there. <laughs> okay, so this is my dogs. So first thing, you need to get your equipment right. I use a three meters leash. I, if I had one dog, I would walk with a five meter leash at least. But for me, when I walk, walk several dogs, I use three meters because the, it's a lot of tangling going on when you have a three, four, five dogs walking at the same time. So three meters leash is what, what, what I am comfortable with. For sure, nothing shorter, nothing shorter. And I'll explain why in a moment. So you need to teach your dog, first of all, you need to teach them to walk both on and off leash so when you have your dog off leash you need to teach them a good recall right i don't know what it's like in your countries but here in norway we need to have our dogs on leash from um if i'm not mistaken it's the first of april until the 20th of august that's for all the country no, the whole country of course in cities and in special areas you will always need to have them on leash. But after the 20th of September, uh, August until April next year, they can actually be off leash. So I, I'm lucky that I live in places where it's very easy for me to, to have walks in nice areas where they can be off leash as well. But you need to, of course, help your dog to understand how this leash walking is going on. And we are not going to talk about that today. I will do a whole presentation on walking on leash, how you can train your dog to walk nicely on leash. And I'm not talking about the obedience on leash that you have your dog next to you looking at you when you're walking, but how to walk nice and calm on a long leash. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that specifically today but you have to teach your dog to do that. That does not come natural, of course. So you also need to wear a well-fitted harness and it's not one size fits all. So you need to find out what kind of harness fits your dog in particular and to avoid colors. I used to use colors a long time ago before I got to the information about a what a color can do to your to your dog. And then when I learned that, I switched to wearing, uh, to using harnesses for my dogs. So I use three meters leash and well-fitted harness on the dogs. And of course, dress for the weather. <laughs> As you can see, I, I live in Norway and I have now one Italian greyhound and he needs to get dressed when it's cold. And this is a funny picture because you can see he's jumping at the same time. So. Obviously, he's not very comfortable when it's cold outside or when it's raining and very windy. I actually live in a far north of Norway. So in the fall and in the winter, the, the, the weather is really not something that he enjoys a lot. So we need to, to dress up the dogs for the walk so it becomes more uh, enjoyable for them as well. That they should not be cold when you are walking them. So this is 
one of the most common questions that I get, how long should the, do the walk be? And that's a very difficult question to answer because it depends on the dog. It depends on the age. It depends how fit your dog is. And um, also actually about how you structure your day. Should you have one longer walk or several shorter walks? Also, if you have a dog that has a lot of stress in him um, or her, then I don't recommend that you do a lot of long walks or cycling or jogging with your dog. This is one of the things that we tend to do a lot is that if you have a dog that is very stressed, maybe you don't even know that your dog is stressed, but he's very enthusiastic and uh, it's, it's, pro it's a problem for him to calm down if he doesn't get enough sleep, all of this, these kind of things. But if you have a dog that is that has a stress issue, then walking more or running or uh, doing that kind of stuff will not help. Actually, that could also, well, make it worse. It could be more stressed by it. But if you have a healthy adult dog that has no issues with stress problems or anything like that, and is fit, does not have any problems with his body, or, yeah, with his body, and is fit and healthy, then for sure, go for nice walks. Let them run. Let them be off leash. Let them enjoy themselves. I have some nice pictures afterwards that I will show you about my, from my dogs as well. Um, and uh, an hour's walk is fine for an adult dog, but an hour's walk is not fine for a very young puppy. Okay, so you have to look at the dog, the age, how fit it is, and if it's any physical issues that you have to consider when you're walking him. And also, where are your walks? So walking your dog is not only just walking your dog. A dog sees the world or, or learn and experiences the world by using their senses, just like us, except that their noses, oh, it's very important to them. They have a very, very good um, sense of smell and using their nose is a very important thing for them to do. So exploring using their nose and also visual, visually to observe is very important to, for dogs. So what I do when I walk my dogs, I walk in different places. I walk in the woods, in the mountains, by the beach, and uh, along just along the road here where I live, or in town. And here I also sit down. <laughs> Um, uh, if I find a suitable place like this, I sit down and I let them explore. I let them touch, feel, sniff, and like you see, even climb on this sculpture that is there. So exploring is important to dogs. And not being in a hurry. I understand we, that we're busy people and that you need to go to work maybe in the morning, but allow for some time to be with your dog. Let your dog decide the, the pace of the walk, how much he wants to smell, maybe even where you walk. Yeah. So if you come to an intersection and you, you, you can choose to go right or left, see where your dog wants to walk. I have in my mind, um, uh, I decide that today you, one of the dogs, will choose where we walk when we're out walking. Because for me, it doesn't matter if you go right or left. Yeah. Um, so when they stop to smell, please let them have the time to smell. We did that on our, our dog trainer school. Homework was for the students to write down how many seconds their dog smelled in each spot where they stopped and how many times they stopped to smell. 
and a lot of people are telling me that you know it, it does they don't have time for the smelling business because it takes ages it, they can smell for maybe 30 minutes in a place but that's i've never ever heard about that actually we got more than 80 replies for our homework last year and um 98 percent of the dogs smelled less than 60 seconds in one place it was just a few percentage that smelled more than one and a half minute in a place so it doesn't take very long uh, it just seems long for us especially if you are in a hurry but for your dog it's more important it he will be more relaxed he will be happier because he's more um, uh, had a nicer walk. He has um, experienced more during the walk if you let him walk in his pace instead of your pace. And like I said, the, the walk should really be for your dog. Also, if you're in the woods or if you're somewhere else, like in the park or, or somewhere with this park, park bench or, or some things that you can um, do some light exercises on i don't know if that's the right word but here my dog is balancing on a tree so it's just we stop and we do things i can hide treats or food or 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 something on, like you know on the ground or on the trees actually um in norway we use this i don't know what you call it in english liver Pate, yeah, liver pate, I guess you call it. <laughs> so you can kind of put the liver pate uh, on a tree as well, and you can let them uh, lick it, find it, smell it. And like I said, allow for time to observe because they they like observing. It's you know that their sight isn't the same as ours. It's more blurry. We have a better sight than dogs. However, they have, um, they're able to see more, um, like uh, more to the sides than we are because of the position of their eyes. But for a dog to to look at something far away, it's more difficult than for us. It's like us without glasses. If you need glasses, so they need more time to to look at things, and that's also calming activity for the dog. And it's just. If they want for walk, when they're off leash, when I walk my dogs off leash, they might be running, playing, having fun the first few minutes, and then they start walking, and then they start sniffing, and they might sit down and wait for the others, and they're not in a hurry. They do different things on the walk. They don't just walk on the pavement for for. 20 minutes, 50 minutes, and then walk back again. If that was their choice, if you let your dog off leash loose by himself, he would not do the same kind of walk as we uh, normally think of as a walk. So like I say, uh, especially my golden retriever, she really likes observing. She sits down a lot and she observes. She just looks around and smelling in the air and just enjoys watching people and cars and whatever's going on. And here as well, this is my collie. He, he loves watching, looking at things. So he would typically go for a walk. Uh, he would start running. Uh, being happy, smelling everything, not taking much time uh, smelling, but being uh, moving a lot. And then after a few minutes, he would calm down and, and start sniffing more and then uh, sit down quite a lot to, to observe. You can also do nose work activities. Um, when I used to work, uh, I was a teacher before, so I had to go to work. And before I went to work, I let my dogs, uh, I went for, for a nice walk. And 
I combined the work, the walk with a lot of nose work activities because I wanted my dogs to come home and be tired and sleep. And you need to use your brain then if you if you want to be tired and sleep, not necessarily only your body being very physical, especially if you have a young dog full of um, full of energy. If you take him out for a run, you can't really run uh, as long or as much as he would like to anyhow, and the adrenaline will go up. So when he comes down, he's not very tired. He's quite awake, ready to start chewing on things or being bored very easily. So if you want your dog to be calmer, then let them do more nose work and more exploring when you go for a walk. And again, if they want to smell, let them smell. And I, like I said, I go different places. Um, I try at least once a week, I try to go to a whole new place. And that's not difficult. That's just stopping your car uh, somewhere where, where you haven't stopped before. <laughs> it's not very difficult to find a new place to walk. We always, not always, but a lot of us people, we tend to go for the same walks the same place every day or at least a lot of the time but for dogs to be mentally uh, active they need to smell and discover new things and explore like i just said so going for walks in different places is also important and to have a variation woods uh, open fields mountains if you have the possibility or the sea or at least any, if you live in a city, go different places in the city, different parks, not the same park every time. <clears throat> and here they're off leash on a field. And it, this is a picture. Um, uh, and here you can see how a picture can kind of lie to you. Because if we were to talk about this picture using calming signals, then... Um, you might think that they are having a disagreement about something, but this is not true. They were just really in the middle of some play. And actually the Collie is a few years younger than the Golden Red Fever. And she was trying to calm him just a little bit down because he was very energetic. He was really going crazy. <laughs> so she's trying to, um, to raise him a bit and tell him to behave. <laughs> Um, but they were not having an argument or anything. It's just a very nice picture with the colors and everything. So let them also play if you have the uh, possibility to let them do that off leash. And like I said, to sit down, take a break, take time to bond, and please don't use your mobile phone when you're uh, walking your dog. You should be, for your, for your own good as well, you should not be talking to your friends on the phone or texting or checking your Facebook account or anything like that. Let it be your free time as well. I actually, uh, I have a tendency to leave my mobile at home when I walk my dogs, um, which, well, it's to be discuss, discussed if that's a good idea because, uh, yeah, things can happen on your walk as well. So I, I would say bring your mobile, but don't use it. Bring your mobile for safety reasons, but don't use it, okay? Sit down, relax. Turi Drugos taught me once, and I will never forget. He, she said to me, you need to learn to do nothing. And first I didn't understand what she meant about that, but now it's very obvious to me. It's about sitting down or you don't have to sit, but just be um, be like a dog. Be in the moment. Don't think about things. Don't do things all the time. We are spending so much time doing other things, being on our mobile uh, computers, watching television, talking to other people. Let this be your time of the day as well when you get the time off from other people and you just enjoy being with your dogs. It's very important, and for me as well, I feel like because I work a lot in front of my computer here at home, so when I go for it, I look forward to our walks because then we have time to really relax and be together. 
And like I said, if you have the opportunity to go to a beach or in the mountains, the woods, wherever you want to go, I mean, your dogs are happy, aren't they? So, like I said, you need to teach your dog to walk on leash without pulling. And this is one of the most common uh, problems that dog owners experience. Uh, but it has to be enjoyable for both you and the dogs. If you don't like the, the walk, the dog won't like the walk and the other way around. Okay, so what about puppies? Puppies should not have as long walks as adult healthy dogs, obviously. Actually, they shouldn't have a walk before they're at least three months old. And by that, I mean, of course, they can be outside. They, they have to, they should be able to explore and experience things. And you can train them to wear the harness and, and the leash. And you can walk for a little um for a few meters at the time of course you're out in the garden if you don't have a garden you have to go out anyhow to uh, so that they can go to the toilet but that's it you go out just to to sniff and to go to the toilet not for exercise purposes and when they grow older you slowly increase the amount of time that you're out exercising your dog um, and you should definitely not cycle or jog or anything with a very young puppy. And there's not really, I know people, we want, we want like um, a specific, you know, answer to things. How long should my dog walk? I have this and this breed. Uh, how long should that walk be? There's no answer for that. You have to consider your, your dog's uh, health, uh, physical health. Uh, mental health as well, like I said, about stress and his uh, or her age, of course. Um, so a lot of the times, in general, it's a lot better with several shorter walks than one really long walk. And especially for those just going for a long, long, long walk, several hours maybe in the mountains, only, uh, only um, during weekends. And during the week, almost no walks or just maybe in the garden or if it's a hunting dog here in Norway they put them in small um, areas outside in the garden and they're standing there most of the time and then suddenly they're expected to go for very long walks or even run and that's not good for your body obviously you have to uh, exercise for that so to sum up let the walks be your free time and your time to bond with your dog and please let the dog let the walk be for your dog's benefit if you need to exercise um, then you should do it uh, off, before or afterwards um, and make sure your dog is not in pain i see a lot of not a lot but sometimes i see dogs that are walking with their owners and the owners is not realizing that the dog is obviously in pain because it's limping or yeah lame or something so be aware of that as well okay so thank you everyone for watching um i wish you a very good week and very nice walks nice relaxed and exploring new places both for you and your dogs thank you very much bye bye